Back at you, back at you. A, a simple how do you do would have been fine. Uh, thanks a whole lot. Um, I think that there's just a leftover excitement energy in here because Kitty was here yesterday, and that's what we're all... Oh, man. I'll tell you, that was the greatest show. I had so much fun, and uh, it was so great that Kitty was here, and, and uh, so this is, this is our first day. It's, I'm sad, I'm grieving a tiny bit. Um, where it's one day after Kitty. I'm counting it uh, down now, and uh, I'm actually referring to it uh, one day AK. Everything from now on <laughs> will be AK. Um, and uh, hopefully you saw it, because it was a really great show. And if you didn't see it, uh, hopefully you, something really big was going on, you have a, a good excuse. And uh, if you don't have a good excuse, you're only hurting yourself. Um, <laughs> Because really, it's, uh, and, and I say this because there's, there's so many exciting shows that, that, that we do. Like, that was a great show yesterday. But just about every show, there's something exciting that goes on. So it's important to watch every single show. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying this for the ratings, seriously. It's about, it's about commitment. And, and when I started the show last year, I said to you, if you'll look back at your tapes, I'm sure you have a library, you'll... <laughs> You'll see that I said, this is going to be a relationship. It's a commitment. We're starting off, and, and I will be here every single day for you. And I, I just ask the same for you. And, um, and I know it's not easy, believe me, but, but where is it written that life is easy? Not in my books. Have you read my books? Um, but um, you can't... You can't just, um, really, I'm thinking of you. You can't just watch once in a while, because it's like school. You can't just, oh, I'll go to school today, but I'm not going to go tomorrow. And as I've said before, again, if you're watching every day, we don't just entertain, we educate. So we edutain. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's, what we like to think this show is like, a, it's like an adult Sesame Street, and uh, without the nosy neighbors or annoying puppets. Um, <laughs> But it, we, we, here's the thing. I just want to help you out. If you're just all of a sudden catching up and you're saying, oh, all this sounds interesting, Ellen, I'd love to know more about it, and I will start watching from now on, then I'd like to bring the stragglers up to speed. And uh, what I should do is I should do it after the show like a detention, but bear with me if, um, <laughs> if you know all this. Um, just to catch you up really quickly, uh, animals in my yard. Lots of animals in my yard. Some of them I don't want, some I want. Uh, bobcat is the most recent that I've discovered in my yard, Bobcat. Um, I have koi, and then there's the heron that try to get the koi, but I've shooed them away with fishing wire. I have two owls, one that sounds like this. <laughs> and then there's another owl that comes in once in a while, and you hear... <laughs> Although last night, one of them was kind of crazy. Like, it was weird. It was like a... It really... And then the... <laughs> normal. But, and also, Tony is deathly afraid of birds, although he loves the <laughs> Can't get enough of that, but scared of birds. Um, then also, I have a pesky raccoon in, in our yard that is uh, always trying to eat the fish, and they sit there, when they, when they get scared, they do this, and they go... <laughs> and then there's uh, spiders everywhere in my house, but I won't kill them. And uh, so I'll trap them with a jar or something and slide a little piece of paper and try to shoo them. But then someone sent me in a little vacuum cleaner that I can vacuum up and release them in the wild. And then also I have uh, in the house three kitties, Subtle, and the two new kittens, Wiley and Cricket, that are larger than that. And um, <laughs> then also one day I looked crazy when I went, who's that? Because there was a fly that went into my eye. Who's that? For no reason. And uh, then also Lucy, the dog that we started the show with, and we had a big naming contest. Lucy is not lo living with me anymore, living with friends, but doing well, and I see her all the time. Um, one day when I was saying goodbye to everybody, I fell, and then we got a telestrator to look back on that and to watch myself fall, so we named that the Looky Loo, and so we look at things on the Looky Loo, and I love to draw pipes and hats on anything that's on there. <laughs> and then um, one time Jim Carrey fell when he was on a bike, and we didn't get anything out of that, and then... Um, <laughs> 
One time I said I like Rolexes, and a man just took a Rolex off his, uh, his arm and just sent me the Rolex, which was really sweet. My mom comes to every single show. She's missed two because she was sick. And, um, <laughs> why, Mama? And um, then I jumped up and down on the chairs with Precious the orangutan, who later on in the show tried to attack Alice and Janney. And uh, I love coffee, but I'm trying not to drink it because it hurts my stomach, and so I can't drink coffee, and I'm hurting really bad. And um, I, uh, I can't, I know it. And, um, <laughs> and I think it's hard for me to, that sort of uh, overall view of the show. This is like using cliff notes. This is not really, maybe you could eke out a C with this, but you'll never get an A or a B. Um, <laughs> For sure not an A. And if you do watch every single day, you'll know that this is right around the time that I start to dance. It's hard, the day after a AK. AK, yeah. <laughs> yeah, post is kitty. It, che it cheers me up, certainly it cheers me up that I'm walking through the audience and I end up dancing with Sally Struthers. Yes! That's certainly <laughs> That's exciting, you never know. You're walking through the audience, you don't know who's gonna be sitting in here. Absolutely. What, were you on your way someplace else and just <laughs> ran out of gas or something? What happened? <laughs> this clearly is an accident. You... <laughs> this, this isn't CBS? No. <laughs> Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And well, we're glad you're here. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, man. Did you see Kitty yesterday, Sally? No! I <laughs> well, we'll give you a tape. We'll send you a tape. <laughs> the thing was, the buildup was so big, we counted down how many days till Kitty and, uh, and it was worth it. I mean, she was so great. She was a great storyteller, just like her friend said. I loved her being here. I can't wait to see her again. I actually, I asked her to play golf because she plays golf and she already had plans, she said. So, <laughs> some other time maybe. But anyway, I can't stop thinking about it. How long has it been since Kitty's been here? Countdown since Kitty. One, one show since Kitty. I miss her. I miss her so much. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, on the show today, Rob Lowe is here. <laughs> We've got a new show called Dr. Vegas, which oddly enough is, I believe, shot in Vegas. And uh, he's, the, he's the whole package. He's a heartthrob, he's a family man. He still looks like he's around 20 years old. He's a good looking guy. And also on the show, Fran Drescher is here. <laughs> she's very funny. I like her a lot. We, we've seen each other out socially a few times. She's great. She's guest starring on uh, the Lifetime series, Strong Medicine. She also wrote a New York Times bestselling book, Cancer Schmancer which uh, is a lighthearted, uplifting take on her battle with cancer. 
and uh, and she's just so funny. And actually, today is October 1st, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And today, I'm wearing a Pink Pony shirt by Polo Ralph Lauren. And a, pro a portion of the proceeds from Pink Pony Productions help support cancer care and prevention. So to purchase a Pink Pony product and find out more about the information for prevention, you can go to our website. Everybody in the audience is getting a Pink Pony T-shirt. <laughs> in good health and these are uh, and they're, they it feels good too it's a great fabric i don't know what it's made out of but it's a, it's a, it's a good fabric and it smells good uh, <laughs> we're also trying to raise money to help the victims of hurricanes and so what we did was we put my doll up on ebay and it's a one of a kind uh, custom uh, ellen cabbage kid doll whatever this is uh, to raise money for the american red cross and noah's wish which is a, a, a organization that goes in and rescues animals that are stranded and starving and, and got left behind. So uh, we're, we're donating our money to those two organizations. And I was told by the, uh, the people that they want me to sign the left buttock of this doll <laughs> because the, apparently the right side is already signed by the doll maker. And uh, to me, revealing a buttock on daytime television seems a little risque. Um, I like that, that she's wearing the Ellen underwear. Look at the... Um, <laughs> I'll sign it, but it's daytime, and I don't want to... Hey, uh, Halston, will you come put up a screen in front of the doll so nobody sees? <laughs> let, let the head show. Okay. All right, it's okay now. Thank you. All right. So the latest bid is up to... Let's take a look on here. Uh, the latest bid is up to $5,600. Um, so that's good, $5,600, although um, it's one of a kind, and there's, you know, it's a good cause, so just keep thinking. All right, uh, you know, I get great, great letters and uh, great gifts, and I thank you all for, for everything you send. This, this one really caught my eye the other day. Um, uh, this comes from Tammy uh, Red, Reed, I don't know if it's Red or Reed, uh, from Shelbyville, Kentucky. Um, dear Ellen. Um, <laughs> Well, she's from Kentucky. I try to imagine the voice of the person who... <laughs> Dear Ellen, first of all, I want to thank you for all the laughs you've brought my family. <laughs> I've watched your show, and I heard you say that you had trouble sleeping. <laughs> well, girlfriend, join the club. I laughed at the description of your sleepless nights, only to find out how similar they were to my own. <laughs> I also have cats climbing on and around me through the night. <laughs> ha ha. I treat my cats just like they're my kids. I have four cats and three kids. My cats are all girls, Tessa, Thand, and Truly, in treasure. <laughs> my kids are one son, Tori, and two daughters, Trianne and Timber. <laughs> my husband and I also tease Tony and Tammy. <laughs> now let's get down to business. I have a solution for your sleeping problem, my squishy pillow. I'm sending one in hopes that you have as many nights of wonderful sleep as I've had with my squishy pillow. Good luck with your squishy pillow. Keep on bringing us laughs. Your friends are Shelbyville. Tony, Tammy, Tori, Triana, Timba, Chester, Sandra, <laughs> Truly, and Treasure. Oh. I love my squishy pillow. This thing, it, at first I was like, oh, and, and now I can't stop holding it. It's very, very thoughtful, and uh, I, I love it. I actually, when I write, we hang out with the writers in the morning, and I lean on it, and I love the squishy pillow. Thank you very much. So, uh, Tony, Tammy, Tori, Triana, Timber, Tessa, Fanda, Truly, and Treasure. <laughs> Tanks. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I will truly treasure this terrific tender token. And um, <laughs> Tammy, I'll never be too tired of tossing terribly in the twilight. <laughs> I'm going to pass this around so you hold it. Don't go away. When we come back, Rob Lowe's sitting here. Our first guest earned an Emmy Award nomination for his role on TV's The West Wind. When? 
wing. These days, you can catch him on his new show, Dr. Vegas. Check it out. Please welcome Rob Lowe. give up when we're doctors uh. for continue doing and like how, yeah. I don't, so I, seriously yeah seriously. why why well, because why? my stomach was hurting I love it and it's I the nectar of the gods oh it certainly is I can't it my stomach was was starting to like burn and that's hurt. not good thing we can't have that no so you drink it all day long I all day. I have a catheter <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have stomach problems oh yeah I have it all really <laughs> Oh, it's the purple pill, it's the red pill, it's everything, yeah. but, you know, you can only give up so much in one lifetime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, it, it, but if, because I take all the, you know, the Prevacid and all the pills yeah, yeah. and all that stuff, and it didn't, you know, it got to the point where, but you drink, because I asked Look at about... It. It's like, it's know, literally, but, you could stick a fork in it. it would I know, that's up. how I drink it. But you, you're drinking espresso, right? It's three shots of espresso with just foam, no milk. Yes, but here's what I learned the other day. I'm learning a lot about this. We got over 1,000 emails of people responding to my yes. coffee thing. Um, espresso has 1% of, of the caffeine, or, or less, less caffeine than coffee. Really? Yes. That's why you So it's like a liquid placebo. It's doing nothing for right. me. Right, but you think now I've ruined it for you. Yeah. See, I thought I was getting all wired and crazy for the show, yeah, and now I'm yeah. just going to fall asleep. Yeah. But, like, you can sleep after, if you drink this right now, you can sleep tonight? Yeah, I cr I'll, and I'll be crazy for 10 minutes and then crash. Really? Uh, see, look, spilling, spilling, spilling on the wardrobe. Not Here. good. Wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you really do look great, though. I was Thank saying you. you still look like you're 20 years old, and you do. You look Thank fantastic. You. you just turned 40. I did, indeed. And you had a big birthday party? I finally gave in to my wife and friends who wanted to do something really big. And I'm, like, sort of low-key about it. Mm -hmm. But we did a big blast, and it was sort of like a this-is-your-life kind of moment. It was really fun. Yeah? We had, uh, we, we had everybody from, like, people I've worked with, done movies with, the high school friends, and uh, it, was, it was awesome. So it was just friends, because I was not there. <laughs> But I sent it. Oh, really? <laughs> Those That's pesky producers, safe. yes. That's always safe. I sent it to your people. They just didn't get it to <laughs> That's you. That's right. That's right. And you were, David Spade was here the other day, and he said you sang karaoke at his... Uh, he had a 40th birthday, and this is, this is what you're looking for in a friend like David Spade. I'm a little depressed. I call him up. I said, Dave, we're both turning 40. Ugh. I said, but you know what? 40 is the new 30, they tell me. He said, yeah, and sun is the new rain. <laughs> Friends like that who needs enemies. But it's amazing. I think of that, you know, because David and I did stand up together. We've right. known each other for a long time, and that you're 40. Isn't it weird? I mean, Spade definitely don't picture as 40. No, but we're all getting. Anybody older. who wears their hats on backwards as much as he he does should not be 40. No, I know. <laughs> at some point, it's not going to be so cute. No, I'm, he's going to be. He's going to be. He's going to have to slowly start turning it just a little <laughs> bit until it ends up in the front. It's so true. So you, so you're 40, and and that's what's weird about because I don't I don't have kids, but I all my friends my age have kids that are all grown up, and you have your oldest is how old? He just turned 11, and and my youngest is going to be nine. Wow. Yeah, it was good. And we, what's the what did you did you do a big blowout for your son's birthday? I, I took him I took him in an RV. I love to rent RVs and drive, but all the kids, all their classmates, throw them in the back, put a movie on, and drive the RV. Down, I'm like Clark Griswold going down the freeway. <laughs> and, to uh, where? To, uh, to the Animal Kingdom in San Diego and SeaWorld. Really? And, and it was unbelievable. So great. And I also like camping. We go camping in the RV a lot. In SeaWorld? No, I... <laughs> but I'll tell you what Is I did do. Is that legal I, that you can just park in there and... You can spend the night with the manatees, though, in the exhibit, which I've done. I've really? Yeah, you can, just, you can go and you have a sleeping bag. It's the coldest, most miserable, wettest thing I've ever done. My kids loved it, so what the hell. Wow. So you, and you, you go camping with all of them, too? Do you do that often? We do it 
once or twice a year. Northern really? California, places like that. That to me, see, it sounds better than I, it's one of those things that sound really good, and right. and it, it turns out to not to be so good. No, it's not for you. I don't. I've never done it. It just feels like one of those things. I mean, it's one of those things where after you know, there's always that point in the day where they're like, we're bored, and yeah. I'm like, well, do you know about snipe hunting? This is my. Do you guys know? Does anyone know about snipe hunting? No. See, this is the thing. Here's my, here's my tip. When your kids are giving you hell, or you're with the kids, you say, go catch the snipe. What are snipe? Well, there's little furry animals. You go and you click rocks together, and they run into your bag. Right? How many of you guys know this story? It's, it's the greatest thing. They go out, they click rocks for hours trying to catch the snipe. Of course, the snipe don't exist. Oh. And meanwhile, you know, you've ruined, crushed all their dreams, their hopes and aspirations, but you've got some free time. <laughs> well, now. You can't do it anymore because you just, told it. you've Ooh. just given it away. Ah. You have to create a new little monster that's that's out there. I should have I should have thought this story through. Yeah, <laughs> that's our. We'll think of something new that they can go okay, and, and collect and, and knock rocks around for. <laughs> but that's disturbing. Like now you're like shut up. Just the rocks <laughs> clicking together. We have to take a break. We'll be All back right, right after right. this. We're back with Rob Lowe. And uh, so now th this show looks very intense. You've you've played a, a political advisor. Right. Now you're playing a doctor. And yep. and what kind of you have to learn all the jargon, right? I thought that doing the White House political speak was hard, but mm -hmm. now you have the medical vernacular and the prop work. And you can see I could barely hold a cup of coffee while I was sitting here. So you definitely don't want me with a scalpel in my hand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm getting really good at it. Really? It's, it's happening, I'm telling you. Horse intestines coming out of fake bodies, and you know, I can, I can do the whole thing. Is that what's happening? No, but it's going to. They'll write that in now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> do you miss the West Wing? I do. It was such a great. It's such yeah. a great show, and it was such a great part. And you know, I uh, going from that kind of intense political thing to playing a guy now who's, you know, more of a wise acre, you mm -hmm. know, and having a little more fun has been really cool. Yeah. Well, it, I, I, I look forward to it. That was a, an, an intense scene right there. We actually had to find something that, because it seems like the whole show is like that. It is. It's, it's very intense, and then it can also be very funny, which is, which is nice, because I like to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, now, and also explain to me, because this is, this is uh, your 13th wedding anniversary, and this is a picture of your wife and your kids. Thank you. And is this what you did on your 13th wedding anniversary? You went, uh... This is what you're looking for for romance, uh -huh. I think. You want to be underwater 60, you know, 100 feet. Where'd you do this? That's what my wife's looking for for romance. Uh, <laughs> that is in the South Pacific, and uh, I, we all got certified over the summer for scuba diving. Ooh, that seems scary. And this is you drinking underwater? That, yeah, th that's me. You know, I found uh, old bottles from an old vintage pirate ship and decided to sample the, uh, the venting. What's that? What do we have here? I don't know. I think that's Nemo. Oh, that's a... <laughs> that's a fish. That's, that's an Nemo. eel. It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's eel that got too close to the lens. I actually, I was taking its picture. And, oh, look at the thing, and it attacked me. Oh, God. <laughs> and so that's you and your son. And that's, uh, yeah, that's my boy. What's his name? That's Matthew. He's, that's he's Matthew. the number one scuba diver. Oh. I, that seems like a beautiful experience. It seems scary to me to be un underwater, You've never done it? Never. Well, you've got to do it. Okay, I will. Um... <laughs> <laughs> It's very adventurous. Um, now, and also, uh, I know that you miss Ohio. You, yeah. you've, you've been talking about that. That you, yeah. what, what do you miss about Ohio? Gosh, I, I, I love the Midwest, particularly fall. Isn't it's great? Isn't it? yeah. Now that we get into fall, I'm, I'm thinking about the change of the seasons and, and sledding. You know, my kids, we scuba dive, but they don't really know so much about sledding. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the best. I remember sledding with my dad and, you know, I remember like knocking myself silly, hitting the tree, all those tough lessons you learn in the snow. I, that's the main thing I miss. You make it sound so good. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we like to make dreams come true. So w someone told me that you missed that part of it, that going sledding and sliding. I've never done that either, by the way. I've never skied. I've never gone down a mountain. I've never s done the sled thing. But we have a surprise for you coming up. And uh, do we have a picture of where we're going? Outside, we set up a major. Wow, look at that. All right. We're going outside I'm to do still that. There. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll be right back on that sled. Yeah. All right, so here we are with Rob uh, Lowe, and, and this was his dream to, to sled, to slide down. California sledding. California sledding.
All the fun without the frostbite. B basically, that's um, what we're talking about. All right, so uh, here we go. All right, so now we're going to race. Let's race. Okay, so let's, right. go, let's get the earthquake thing going first. Okay, okay we're going on three. All right. Three, two, one. That's on one. guest was nominated for two Emmy and two Golden Globe Awards for her signature role on The Nanny. She's also the New York Times best-selling author of Cancer Schmancer. Please welcome Fran Drescher. I was just saying that, you know, I just came from shoot, I'm shooting a new television series. I'm returning to television. We're very yeah. excited. <laughs> so I just came out of the studio to do this. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for being on. And, and of all days that you'd want to be on, it's your birthday today. <laughs> That's great. Uh, now, do you like when people in restaurants start singing to you and stuff like that, or is that embarrassing? Oh, uh, no, no, it's not embarrassing. I really don't mind. I don't care about we those can't, things. We can't afford it. I'm just saying <laughs> other places. I know. Isn't that funny? You can, you can never do happy birthday on TV. No. Because it's so expensive. Someone wrote that song. Somebody wrote that, and they still own the licensing for it. Man, that's a good family. Costs a lot of money. Yeah, that's a good So that's a, you'll never hear it on TV, usually, unless, I don't know. Yeah. Not, not, you know, not on my show or yours, but maybe no. some show. We, we have to write a new happy birthday. It's the only song we have for happy birthday. It seems, you know, Christmas carols, we have a lot of different carols. We have That's a lot of true. different holiday songs. We have one birthday song. I know, sometimes I do, you know, happy, 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 happy birthday, happy, happy. And that's why we have one. <laughs> and that's why, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> There's that laugh we miss. <laughs> well, you'll get plenty of it soon enough. I'm coming back uh, in January on the WB. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So, life is good for you right now. You've got a new, a new show, and, uh, and you're healthy, and, and you're dating again. Well, I'm, yes, I'm dating again. I, I mean, I wish I could live to meet somebody that I really like. It's taken me a while to get over the ex. And uh, oh, recently, I went up on a date. I can't even tell you. I'm trying to be really open about things. Somebody called me to speak with this doctor, uh, and I'm able to, you know, get through to people. And I wanted to help this gal out because she was a friend. So I called him. Totally didn't know who it was, but knew of him. And uh, so I, he was really nice. Took the call. Said that he would help me out with my friend. And I said, you know, anytime you want to come to a taping of the show. And he said, well, I don't know about that. I mean, but I'd love to take you out to lunch. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, that's pretty, you know, like outgoing of him. But I guess he's got that whole, like, God doctor thing happening. <laughs> So he feels like, you know, he could just go ahead and, 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 and ask me out. So I, I said, okay, well, you know, that sounds good. And uh, then I decided, okay, I'm on hiatus. You know what? I'm going to put my best foot forward. I'm going to call this doctor. I'm going to go out with him. I'm going to see what happens. So lunch didn't really work out, and he said, let's do dinner. So we, <laughs> so um, I, I Google him to see what he looks like. And he looks like a young Steven Spielberg. And I'm thinking, you know, uh, not really my type, but I'm trying to be open. And it was good enough for Kate Capshaw. <laughs> so I'm like, OK, fine. 
Make the date with the dude sitting. I pick a really kind of sexy, cool restaurant here in Hollywood. And um, I'm waiting for him, waiting, waiting, waiting. But at this point, you know, like the waitress knows I'm on a blind date. She's feeling sorry for me. She's bringing me bread. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's special. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They don't usually do that. <laughs> <laughs> he's stuck in traffic, yeah. so he calls me on the phone to tell me that he's stuck in traffic. So I start sort of having the date over the phone. And I said, you know, have you ever been married? And he said, oh, yeah, a long time ago. Oh, do you have kids? And he says, yeah, um, you know, four. Uh, what, how old? Uh, from 22 to 36. <laughs> and I'm thinking, 36? Uh, is he single? <laughs> shows up and I'm sitting there and you know so I'm making a conversation and he says to me you know yeah I'm going to the 36 year olds uh, you know next week to visit him and his wife and their son and I said oh, okay I said so yeah well do you stay with them when you go and he says yes in grandpa's room <laughs> and I think to myself oh that's sexy <laughs> so, yeah it's I it didn't work out you no, know, when he I up, how can't, he... you know, the last one was 16 years younger, and I can't go from that to 60. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too big a spread, but... Uh, well, you'll meet somebody. I mean, well... Will it, I? Yes, you will. You know, oh, I, I don't know. I went wait. out with this other guy. I met him. I, we went out for... I, it, I didn't... I was out with my girlfriend. He was sitting next to me with a guy. So the four of us started talking. And uh, then the next thing you know, we're enjoying each other. He picks up the tab for all four of us and says, come on, there's a party that we're going to. And it was in a public place. So I said, okay, come on, let's go, because I'm, I'm in that kind of crazy mood. And then somehow, you know, at the party, we start, you know, like, dancing, kissing a little bit. And Look, uh, the emphasis is dancing, kissing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he says to me, what have you got to do tomorrow morning? And I said, well, I have a Pilates workout. And he says, well, call your instructor and tell her you're going to be late. And I said, no, 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 I got to go home because I've got a little doggy waiting for me. And he said, OK, well, uh, you know, why don't uh... I said, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> You can come home with me if you want. And, uh, you know, it's very daring of me. It's not something I would normally do, but I was just in one of those moods. <laughs> um, and so he comes home with me, and it's like, I, it, you know, what you see in the movies is not, I'm totally not cool about these things, because at first it starts off, you know, pulling the clothes up in the living room, leaving this trail of clothes, and it's like, just like in a movie. Then we get into the bedroom, and it's like, I'm so nervous, because I'm thinking, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> What is he gonna do? What's gonna happen? And you know, we're like, he's a good kisser. We're making out. The next thing I know, he's a, he, he's says, wait here one minute. Goes into the kitchen. I hear rattling around. You know, there's like, and it's. I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is like, you know, um, looking for Mr. Goodbar. He's gonna come back with a butcher knife, and that'll be the end of me. Oh my God! I was so nervous. It was like the worst experience. Although he did give me a delicious massage, but. I can't do things like well, that. The, on the other hand, the 60-year-old would have been asleep by now. So <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back right after this. That's so great. <clears throat> now, we're back with Fran Drescher, and that's a character uh, in Strong Medicine. You, 100th episode, 100th yes. episode mm -hmm. of Strong and Medicine. It, yeah. And it mirrors your story, basically. Yes, well, uh, this woman is much sicker than I actually was. And, you know, I'm really not used to seeing myself looking so bad, but, and you know, I look like hell because I'm dying there. I actually die shortly thereafter. But, um, yes, the, uh, the uh, executive producer of the show uh, came to me and, uh, and, and we talked about the things that I'm passionate about, uh, the advocacy that I do in Washington and what I lobby for, and, uh, you know, trying to get uh, improved testing for women's basic health care exams because early detection is indeed what equals survival. And I just feel like, um, you know, if we collectively make a loud enough noise, then we can let the government hear that our lives are more valuable than insurance company profit margins. <laughs> And, uh, 
and it really is amazing. You look, you know, well, you you caught it a little late, but you still caught it in time. Yeah, and I was very lucky that I happened to have a very slow-growing, non-invasive cancer. So, um, you know, I, I mean, I had to get a radical hysterectomy, but um, that sort of did the job. Mm -hmm. And after two years of being misdiagnosed, which is what's so common in women, um, it, you know, my age, the, it's usually, you know, some kind of... They blame it on some kind of perimenopausal condition or mm -hmm. menstrual problem, and they really don't test you for the gynecologic cancers that women, you know, can get, and they're getting them younger and younger, so you really have to know the tests that are available, and you have to demand them. Well, good. Well, that's good information to know. Don't, don't I, just take the doctor's word for it. Say, I want to know for sure. Exactly. Um, I moved to New yeah. York. Uh, you, I mean, I didn't move, but I, I bought a place in New York. I know, I know. And you and you love chandeliers. And uh, you, I'm excited. I, it's we, in the same building with Madonna. I see her and her, our kitchen windows face each other. Really? Well, she'll I, be jealous to see this chandelier then, because uh, if, it, if you want to hang this in your place and wow. she sees that, she doesn't have that. Medicine this Sunday at 9 on Lifetime. One more thing right after this. I want to thank Rob Lowe and Fran Drescher. Monday, Joan Travolta and Mace will be here. Oh, and one more thing. Happy birthday to Fran. Thank and you. Have a good weekend. Thank Bye. You. We're going up. You want to go up? Let's go. No, no, Come no. on. No, you got to take cake, your then. shoes off. I, I, no, that's not for me. I'll have a piece of cake. <laughs> that's what I was doing. <laughs> got to take my shoes off. Okay. You going down head first? I'm going head first. All right, we'll go ahead. I'm diving up. One, three. One, two, three.